In this video, we're gonna show you how to integrate Auth.net to Salesforce in just a few minutes. Let's jump in. All right, well, first off, install both the charge and base package as well as the charge and orders package. And you can put both of them into your production organization. Next, we're gonna configure Chargent. You've got some tips in the quick start guide, but that's really why you're on this video. Okay, so now in Salesforce, it's time to set up authorize.net. So I'm gonna start by clicking the app launcher waffle in the upper left-hand corner, and I'm gonna choose the Chargent application. Once on Chargent, simply click the Gateways tab and click New. In this case, you're gonna use Authorize.net, so we know that you do have a Gateway account, so we'll click Yes on the first page, and then we'll select Auth.net off the next page and click Continue. It's time to get our keys, our login ID and our transaction key. If you click this link here for View Gateway Documentation, uh, we've got a great companion guide to this video that'll walk you through exactly what needs to happen. It's also linked in the description below. Okay, first we need our login ID. So over here in authorize.net, I'm just gonna click account, and then I'm gonna find API credentials and keys, and I'm gonna click there. Uh, in this case, I need my API login ID, which you'll see right here. I'm just gonna copy it and pop back over and paste it. I need my transaction key, so I'm just gonna simply obtain a new transaction key and click Submit. Once I've gotten the transaction key from the page, I paste and click Sign In. Chargent's testing it. I can see from the green toast up here that it's been verified successfully and simply click Continue. Next, the Chargent Setup Wizard asks if we should use tokenization. Chargent strongly recommends that all of our customers use tokenization. For more information on that, check out our explainer video right here. Do be sure to consult our PCI guide for information on complete details about configuring Chargent to best reduce your organization's PCI scope. All right, next up, we've got currency. What are you gonna be using? On the screen, you can see the most popular ones with our Chargent customers. Do keep in mind, we support all government-issued currencies that are supported by your gateway. Next up, are you gonna use Payment Console? We sure hope you will. We think it's a very slick way to take payments. Uh, this is letting us know that the system is going to send an email on your behalf requesting the key. When you do get that, please bring that in and put it into the system to make sure everything works. All right, what payment methods will you be accepting? Credit card and bank account, sometimes known as ACH, e-check, or direct debit. And then which cards? So sometimes folks don't want to take American Express, so I can just toggle that off. I want to take all of these in my org, so I'm going to click Continue. One of the nice features of Payment Console is that there's a number of different ways that you could set up the buttons. You may want to do your charge button, you may want to just update a token, or possibly uh, you need to do an authorization and you don't need to do charge. Simply just toggle whichever ones you need for your process. And that's it, congratulations. In just a quick five minutes, you've successfully configured your new charging gateway. Let's take a look at testing next. Okay, well now that you've got your gateway set up in Salesforce, it's time to do some test transactions. And we wanna do this to ensure that Chargent was set up correctly. And also, this is a good way to get to understand how Chargent is gonna help you take payments inside of Salesforce. Now, this is critical to your success as a Chargent user. You have to complete extensive testing. Remember that this is your payment system. No organization will survive if they cannot get paid. And if you fail to test, there's a good chance you won't get paid. So please, take this seriously. At a minimum, you're gonna to wanna to create a few test charges right now. So you can see the Gateway Setup Guide for some help with that. And you can also take a look at some of the other videos on this channel. Okay, just a quick aside to talk about sending transactions in the Salesforce Sandbox. So when Chargent is installed in the Salesforce Sandbox, transactions, they're always sent to the Payment Gateway's test account or their developer environment. We do this as a security precaution. We wanna prevent real transactions being accidentally sent from your Salesforce Sandbox environment. 
When Charge is installed in a production Salesforce environment, the test endpoint checkbox on the gateway record will allow you to select between sending payments to the live or the test environment. So quick tip here, there's a few exceptions to this rule about having different endpoints for live and then for test. So just note that we documented them in the companion page that goes along with this video, uh, which we did link below. In those exceptions, there will be a single endpoint to send the transactions to. And then there'll be different credentials for live versus test. And it's just something we want you to be aware of. Let's talk about transaction sync. So Chargia has always sent charges and authorizations to the payment gateways and then recorded that result in real time as a transaction in Salesforce. Chargent can also update Salesforce records long after the initial transaction. So this works well for bank account transactions that are returned non-sufficient funds or NSF, or credit card authorizations that expire or credit card charges that are charged back. Two fields, transaction status and settlement date can now be updated through a daily scheduled batch in Salesforce. The possible values of the transaction status are either final or non-final. If the status is final, then no more updates will occur for that transaction. The settlement date field stores the date and time when the transaction status is changed to final, such as settled or voided, after which it will no longer receive any updates. So to schedule the batch, we are just going to navigate to setup. We're gonna to go to develop Apex classes, click the scheduled Apex button and choose the scheduled batch update transaction status. I'm gonna give it a name of transaction sync. I want it to be every day of the week, so I've selected all of those. It can start now and I'm gonna have it run uh, for quite some time. And I like to see these things updated uh, at three in the morning and I'll click save. So there we go. We have scheduled the Apex class. Refer to your gateway setup guide for additional information that's unique to your gateway. Again, you'll find that in the description below. And that's it. We just integrated auth.net with Salesforce in record time. Your boss is gonna think you're a rock star. Hey, if you need help with anything else, please reach out. We're here to help. Hey, thank you for watching our video. And while you're here, please subscribe to our channel. Click that notification bell for immediate updates and if you'd like to talk payments, please get in touch. We're always here to help.